Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Armed and dangerous. You got that right, brother. Armed and dangerous. Make sure you all get out and vote. Make sure you vote for the right thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Things are happening. I love it. I love it. Not only is God good all the time, but he's trying to get things to his children. We are entering a such time of war. Tremendous time of war. And in the time of war, there's many battles. Amen? And in these battles, now when you really think about it, war consists of the purpose of war, of course, is to try to promote one's agenda. And they try to promote one's agenda into another area, expand their agenda. That's the purpose of war. Sometimes it's to retaliate against somebody trying to take their land. So in reality, war is associated with multiple battles over territory. It's taking territory. And when you begin to compromise, you lose territory. That is the ploy of the enemy is to try to get us to slack up a little bit, to compromise a little bit, then territory is actually taken. When you think about the word compromise, it's actually an agreement to give up territory. Does everybody get it? So when we really think about compromise, we're actually agreeing with giving up territory. And everyone has a specific position that God has placed you, not only a place of boundaries, but a place of territory. Well, you must battle to maintain that territory. If you begin to compromise that territory, you begin to lose it. Amen? You know, the word says that the heavenlies are taken by force. Satan's greatest weapon we know is deception. So the one of the things he wants to do is try to deceive us to compromise. He tries to convince us he'll push you, push you, and push you to you, eventually will give in to compromise. Unless you keep him a distance away. That's why the word says, make no place for the devil. Amen? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. In Genesis chapter 1, in verse 26, We have seen um, the body of Christ has compromised for many years. If they didn't compromise to secularism, we wouldn't have had Obama as president. Hillary, what is it? Crooked Hillary would have been locked up already. In fact, she might not have ever even had the opportunity to get to that place. But the enemy compromises the body with secularism. He tries to pound us, pound us, pound us until we finally give in to compromise. And Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, 
It says, and the Lord said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. That was dominion. Amen. Amen. Man was created with a position of dominion and authority. What the enemy tries to do is compromise your position. If he can get you to compromise it. See, so many times we kind of neglect compromise. Does it, the, the, the reality of compromise. In other words, how many of y'all know if you compromise your discernment, you're going to give up property. You're going to give up land. You're going to give up territory. There are things that I believe that the Holy Spirit wants us to refresh us on in the area of compromise position. Amen? Think about how many things that we've compromised in our past and the result was. And we are in a time and season right now where compromise cannot be a part of our life. I'm not saying you're not going to make the mistake. Amen? But the area of recognizing it right away. Right away. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. You know, so many times... Um, Trust is earned, amen? amen? Things are earned. There's a price to pay, isn't there? We talked about some of this already. In the area of filling conditions, fulfilling the, meeting the conditions, and then things are released. Amen? amen? By meeting those conditions, it means that there's no compromise. If you compromise in trying to meet the condition, it, then things don't get released. Amen. You know, but the enemy has a tendency to try to play our emotions. I have very good experience of that with a child. You know, parents love their kids, even when they're morons. Amen? And, you know, you, you know when they're trying to manipulate you. What's what they're actually doing? What is manipulation? It's, it's, an, uh, 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 it's basically... They're trying to compromise you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what manipulation is, compromise. And many people get compromised by emotion. Oh, I love them, but you know, no. And they compromise. And again, compromise is an agreement of giving up territory. Does everybody get this? Vitally important. In 2 Corinthians 11, uh, first three verses, let's speak it together. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me, for I am zealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to what? One husband, that I may present you as a what? Chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. This is an answer to so many people's question about really what happened to Eve. She did not eat an apple or an orange or a banana. She got seduced by the serpent and had sex with him. Okay? Here's your confirmation. Let's read this again. 
Verse 2, what does it say? For I am what? Jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. Hello. What happened to her? He got her to what? Compromise. But the sentence before this was known as a chaste virgin. Now, he says, as the serpent deceived Eve. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Again, he said, I want to present you as a chaste virgin, untouched, Sexually, amen, sinfully. But the serpent deceived Eve. She compromised her position and gave up territory. What territory did she give up? Her body. She let her guard down, agreed to give up territory herself. Then she deceived Adam. To compromise his territory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Psalm 127. Again, the enemy loves to play our emotions to try and get us to compromise. You might have heard the story when my wife and I were casting out demons out of an individual and that once there was about 30-something demons that came out of this girl. And this one demon popped his head up and said, where will I go? What will I do? I thought, whoa, yeah. I went, wait a minute. <laughs> Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. They tried to compromise me. But resistance was futile. <laughs> Verse 1. Unless the what? The Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Unless the Lord builds the house and a watchman stays awake, <laughs> he will stay awake in vain. Why? Because he's compromised. Does everybody understand it? He's compromised his position because he's not allowing the Lord to build the house. So he's actually staying awake and watching over it in vain. It's compromised. Does everybody get it? 1 Corinthians 3. How many times did you go out and you set your mind on something? You know what? I'm, I'm going to go do this. I'm gonna, you might be looking for something to purchase as you want to pray about it and be led by the Lord. And you, you're not going to get deceived or compromised by whatever it looks like. You're going to make sure the vehicle runs perfect and everything else and whatever. And, and the salesman is trying to compromise you. He's trying to take your cash, your territory, your possession. <laughs> Next thing you know, you drive away and whoop. Oh, boy. Then you go, man, I can't believe I gave in to that. How many times have you ever thought, I can't believe I gave in to that? You know what that means? We got compromised. We got manipulated. And we lost territory. Finances, whatever it may be. You lost possession or you lost territory. It's considered territory. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal as to what? Babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now 
you were not able to receive it. Why? Because they were stuck in the outer court. Does everybody get this? They had either fallen back to the outer court or they're still in the outer court. That's where babes are. They're in the outer court, not in the holy place. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Well, if you're still acting like a humanite, then you're in the outer court. In fact, you have one foot in the outer court and one foot in the outer darkness. Amen. Again, that was a compromise, their position of growth, and they're still babes living in the outer court for years. They've compromised their position. And if they've compromised their position, they what? Gave up territory. Gave up something. Remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When there's compromise, you do lose something. Every time. You know, you think about it, all the commercials and everything else, and everything today is medication. That's the cure. You're oppressed, take this. If you're in debt, take this. Drink this. Smoke this. You know, whatever it is. Everything is associated with trying to make yourself feel better, but yet in reality, they're trying to cause you to compromise. Amen? Think about this. Every commercial is to cause you to compromise. That's what advertisements are, are compromise. 2 Samuel 11. Compromise your position. That's what they're after. Again, look at how many people compromise their position in voting. And put these Luciferians in office. And how many babies were murdered, unborn, never had an opportunity because of the body of Christ compromised. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it. And it happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to what? To battle. That David sent Joab his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon, besieged Rabbah. But David did what? Remained at Jerusalem. He compromised his position as a king. He was supposed to be out doing what? Warfare and battle. And that's when he became peeping David, right? Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. Obviously, he didn't depart. <laughs> so David sent an inquiry about her. Oh, he wants the extra mile. Because he was the king. Compromise his position. It's supposed to be out in battle and warfare. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, it is, is this not the Sheba, the daughter of Alam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Uriah was David's right-hand military man. And the end result was, then David sent messages and took her. She came to him and they lay with, and lay with her for she was cleansed from her impurity and she returned to her house and a woman conceived. So she sent and told David and David said, I am, and said, I am with child. And David sent Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah the, to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war was prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house, and a gift of food from the king followed him. 
But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house because he was loyal. Amen. So when they told David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said, Uriah, did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, the ark and, and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in open fields. Shall I then go to my house and eat and drink and to lie with my wife as you live, as your soul lives? I will not do this thing. He was loyal. Make a long story short, David sent Uriah up to the front, so he got killed. Amen. All because he compromised. Amen? Compromised his position. David compromised his position and set up his right-hand man to be killed. He fornicated, committed adultery, and lost a child. Altering his destiny. With delay and hardship. And we know the end result was the Lord would not allow him to build his house. Amen. It had to be left to his son. In Judges 16. Oh, happy day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Compromised positions. I know I have judges in here. I've been judged already. <laughs> oh, happy day. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. Judges 16, verse, seven, uh, verse 15. Now, we know this is about Samson and Delilah. And Delilah said to Samson, how can you say I love you? Emo emotional manipulation. When your heart is not with me. You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Obviously, there was a, another motive involved. And it came to pass when she pestered him. Daily with her words impressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. He should have ran then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he finally gave in. That he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all this of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lured him to sleep, on her knees, and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. Nice. <laughs> Talk about a witch. And she began to torment him, and his, and, 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 and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. I want you to know something vitally important, that when we do compromise, 
Not only do we give up territory, but we give up presence. And sometimes that additional presence you will need to overcome. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Blindness always comes. And brought him down to Gaza. Then they bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. In other words, bondage. Giving up territory will always bring bondage. In other words, you may not know it then. Does everybody understand? If you're giving up peace, every piece by piece, you're giving up territory. And next thing you know, you're overtaken. Sansom compromises position of sanctification. He compromised his position of sanctification. Why? He was a Nazarite. He compromised his authority. He compromised the anointing. He lost the presence of God. He lost his sight. He lost his strength, lost his authority, lost his dominion, and lost his destiny. Ephesians 2. Is everybody okay? So let's step back for a second. What's the Lord trying to tell us? <laughs> he's trying to warn us. Amen? Again, he's not saying that we won't make a mistake, but we got to recognize this. You, we must be sensitive enough to when we're beginning to compromise. Now, you got to remember something. The effect isn't always instant, is it? <laughs> it's hardly ever instant. It's a process. The enemy knows how to wait. He knows how to pound us, then wait. Pounds us, then waits. Takes a little, takes a little, then waits. He doesn't go in and whew, the whole thing. He waits. So he's got, sometimes he's got more patient and more Christians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verse 1. And it says, And you were made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Think about the course of this world. Is it nothing but manipulation and compromise? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we also once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others, but God who was rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were compromised, dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, by grace we've been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Many people don't even realize that they've compromised their heavenly place and position. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Again, compromised. You know, think about how many times we've lost the attitude of gratitude. How many times we forget where we came from. That's been compromised then. Compromise the rescue of escape in the position in heavenly places of authority and dominion. Compromise. Many times, again, compromise will not come without an emotional attack. That's how it happens. Compromise always comes by an emotional thing. Could be lust of money, love of money. That's still an emotion, isn't it? Philippians chapter 2.
Oh, hallelujah. Compromise position. It is an agreement to give up territory. In verse 12, Philippians 2, 12, let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own what? Salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Again, many people have compromised their salvation. And not even realize it. Amen? Amen? 2 Timothy 2. You know, you got to remember that um, because little children are, are the flesh creatures, carnal, you know, They can, I want to say, push you, nag you, convince you, use the love language, whatever it is, to get you to compromise, you know. And once you give in, oh, can I have a sucker? Oh, man, you know you didn't. All right. Five minutes later, can I have another sucker? But you just got a sucker. Actually, what they're saying is, you're a sucker. <laughs> Hello. This is how the enemy operates. He doesn't leave you alone because you gave in. He comes back to take again and again and again and again until he's taken what he needs. Then he takes, uses you to take someone else's. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong, Strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who, are, who will be able to teach others also. Therefore, you must what? Endure. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Wow. And if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Hmm. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even the point of chains, but the word of God is not chain. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Again, many people have compromised their military position given up their territory, land, possessions, even marriages, children, jobs, everything, because they've compromised. Ephesians 6. I'll tell you all things can work to the good to those who are love the Lord and are getting position. That's what vindication is about. Amen. God will vindicate you at some time as long as you stay in position. He's faithful. Think about how many, what do you think temptation is? <laughs> temptation is nothing but what? Compromise. Manipulation. How many times people give in to temptation? How many times people fall back? Oh, just one cigarette. And the devil tries to convince you, oh, it's just one cigarette. Oh, it's just one drink. Oh, it's just one hit. Oh, it's just 
one night and then I'm over with. Just two thoughts of that has already compromised. Ephesians 6.10. I speak, if only my brother be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. Put on a whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How many people compromise putting on the armor of God? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, and against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Many people don't even realize it, that they're compromising, thinking everything is physical, not spiritual. Not even realizing that the influence is demonic. Those are demons that are speaking to you. Amen. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to... Stand. Hallelujah. People have compromised warfare position of battle and become casualties. Amen? In John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you what? Abide in my word. How many people have compromised God's word? How about his covenant? If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. How many people have compromised the truth? Amen. And the truth will make you free. Wow. So compromise the truth of the word of God will compromise your freedom. Brings you into bondage. Hebrews 10. Compromise the truth. Compromise your freedom. Remember, compromise is an agreement of giving up territory. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking to assembling ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching, many people compromise assembly to worship. When they do that, they compromise the anointing, being filled with the Spirit. Many people compromise their borders that God has set. How about associations? Bad company corrupts good habits, right? Right? How many people have compromised the music they listen to? How about discipline? It will always cause no compromise will cause loss of territory. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. Man, I could go on for days with this. <laughs> I think we're getting the point, though. Again, I really believe that the Holy Spirit is just trying to reactivate us in this area to be more alert about compromise. Compromise. How many people compromise their worship? Whew. They give up. Three songs? Well, they could stand in line all day long if there was a paycheck there.
but they can't worship long enough. In other words, they get connected. Proverbs 10, 6. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked is, will what? Rot. The wise in heart will receive commands. That's direction. But a prating fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely. Hello, how many people have compromised integrity? Christ's integrity. Amen. But he who perverts his ways will become known. Again, compromise integrity, compromise or security. And the other thing that it compromises is their identity. I want to say that again. Integrity, compromise will compromise identity. James chapter 2. In verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily bread and, you say, and, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Dead. Dead. Now this is works with connection. Amen? Amen? But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Many people have compromised their faith. In other words, compromised their connection with the Lord. And I'm telling you, if you compromise your connection with the Lord, you're compromising your worship. You're compromising your surrender. The enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And many times you don't even know what he's got access to. Remember, they're always looking for access. That's why the word says, make no place for the devil. In other words, shut every door. <coughs> Look at how many people compromise prayer. They compromise prayer. They compromise their sanctification. They quench the spirit. Go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Verse 32. Don't let the enemy, what do you think, deceiving? Amen? Amen. If you're deceived, you're compromised. Matthew 6, 32, For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these, but seek first the what? Kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek. In other words, seek. Don't compromise your seek of the kingdom. And don't compromise his righteousness in you. Amen? Amen. Compromise seeking and his righteous character will cause lack. That's why many people lack, because they compromise Christ's righteous character. Or they compromise seeking. And lack comes. And a close at Galatians 5. Be sober, be alert, because the devil is out seeking whom he may devour or compromise. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, let's speak it together. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 
Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law yourself. You have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Many compromise the price of Christ. They forget. They compromise that. The great price Christ made on the cross for me and you. Never lose sight of that. That's the exchanging power the compromise of price, the price of Christ's death and resurrection, his power, his covenant promises. Many people, because they compromise that area of that, what Christ paid for us, they begin to lose heart. They lose faith. They lose territory. Remember, this battle is over territory, over your mind, your will, your body, your family, your lives your harvest, and your destiny. Don't let the enemy compromise you. Amen? Amen? So we may have lost some things already because of compromises in our life, but God is able to restore it all. And as we stay in position, you will find that God will vindicate you. Why? Because if you've repented truly for it, Jesus paid the price. And you are not guilty. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this revelation and impartation be deeply planted in us. Protect these seeds so it grows and bear fruits. Bring to remembrance what you've spoken. And keep us sensitive and discerning so we don't get sucked into any manipulation, deception, compromise, or giving up any territory but maintain it for your glory in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.